Well met and welcome back to Hearthstone Grand Masters. You're just in time for the first match of the day here for Asia Pacific. This is once again the semi-finals and then the finals for this week. So you couldn't have picked a better time to join us. We're going to be finding out who will get the maximum six points by taking down the entire tournament and put themselves in a great position to end up in Division A in just a couple of weeks time for the round robin. And our first match of the day, as you can see there, is going to be Surrender versus Flurry. Uh, pretty standard bans, I think it's fair to say there. The only real question, I guess, was whether Flurry should have banned the Warrior away from Surrender, but I feel like he's been fairly consistent. Yeah, I think that he might be just um, looking to take a win over the Warrior with his Mage. I feel that's probably one of the reasons for bringing Mage in the first place. Uh, I would be worried for his Dragon Hunter and Rogue going into that, though, so I think it will be a big mad the mind games as to the mm. queue order because uh flurry could potentially maybe start with a throwaway deck and then just try to yeah. snipe the warrior well i think that that's actually been one of flurry's best uh assets so far in this week's tournament play it has been specifically his queue order because i believe in the three matches we've seen him play he went mage first twice right. and then on tyler Tyler queued up the mage first, maybe hoping to get the mirror, and Flurry just did a full bait and switch on him and went for the Dragon Hunter, which got him a fantastic first matchup. And to be honest, the series just didn't really even look close after that. Yeah, the Dragon Hunter surprisingly got uh, two wins. I think we were definitely expecting it to get an easy win over the mage, which it did, but then it got another through, and then mm. Tyler was just on the back foot that whole time, although it was very close. At one point, it looked like Tyler might be able to pull it off, but heartbreakingly for him, it didn't <laughs> quite pan out. But that is no detriment to Flurry. I mean, Flurry played very well as well. And I'm excited to see this Dragon Hunter perform yet again, because I think it's well positioned against both the Rogue and the Highlander Hunter from Surrender. I think so too. So let's take a look at it to see what we're talking about if you are unfamiliar. You'd be forgiven for thinking that Dragon Hunter is a uh, relatively controly deck. That is generally what Dragon decks kind of end up as, given that they are quite big minions. You want to wait till the late game before you throw them all down. But make no mistake, this is an incredibly aggressive deck. It's really only using the dragons uh, to allow you to activate some of your key dragon combo cards like Rotness Drake for a ridiculously powerful mid-game swing and Corrosive Breath to just burst your opponent down. And right there in the mirror, the Stormhammer being the key card in the deck can get in nearly infinite swings because the deck usually has enough dragons to just keep going. And um, when you're an aggro deck, you're a lot less um, concerned about your health total. So the hunters tend to use the Stormhammer to either conveniently remove opposing minions or just deal that face damage. A very, very powerful card. It is. Uh, it's powerful decks for Flurry, but they're also slightly off meta, I think we could argue. The Rogue, not so much given that it's the most brought class this week, but the Mage in particular is something that uh, I've been kind of pleasantly surprised by in terms of how well it's been performing, I have to be honest. I expected it to be a very weak deck going into this week, given that it feels like it's weak to Demon Hunter, any aggro deck you can bring. Didn't think it would be especially good against Rogue either, but it feels like it's getting the wins against Rogue. It's decent against the Warrior. It's only really the hyper aggro decks that it seems to be suffering against, which, uh, to be fair, could come in the form of the Highlander Hunter from Surrender. True enough. And even though we didn't even expect it to get wins against Rogue, etc., we do expect it to get a win against particularly this aggro Warrior from Surrender. The other archetype, which is highly represented in APAC. Again, kind of trailblazed by Hunter Ace over in Europe, and now almost the entire APAC region. If they're bringing a warrior, it is not of the bomb variant. Instead, it's running the uh, either the eggs, the War Mall Challengers, or both. Yeah, and uh, Surrender here has opted to go for the non-egg version. I think it's one of those weird uh, dichotomies that comes up in Hearthstone, where this is, in my opinion, overall, probably the more powerful build of the deck. But I feel like it's also significantly harder to play than the egg version. Because if you're not too careful, you can just play a couple of battle rages, draw 15 cards from your deck, and all of a sudden you're left with nothing and you've just wasted all your cards and you haven't actually achieved anything over the course of the game. You have to know exactly what each card is used for. Uh, for example, saving inner rages for a lethal combo with Hawk Run, or saving a rampage for that, or do you throw it in the early game to lock down the board? There's no just throwing down eggs and dominating the mid-game that way. You rely much more on powerful combos. Uh, but if you know exactly what you're doing with those combos, 
I think it is a uh, very, very powerful thing. And a lot of the power of it relies on the flexibility of the deck, which is why I think we've been seeing a lot of Warrior Band. If not Demon Hunter, this is the class that's uh, getting the most respect from the players because it can function as an aggro deck if you get the Rampage starts, can function as the OTK with the Cork Runs like you mentioned, and can function as control, uh, probably if it were queued against this Dragon Hunter, but that's not the case. Surrender actually leads up with his Rogue. He does indeed, and he gets an interesting starting hand here. Pharaoh Cat into Bamboozle. I'm already seeing, to be honest, a pretty respectable curve. Yes, definitely. Um, especially since he's going first, it means he gets to play the Pharaoh Cat, probably unchallenged on the board, and then play Bamboozle. The only removal options for the Hunter on turn one are Coining Corrosive Breath, which I think Oof. is very much not on the game plan for Flurry. Yeah, I like it a lot from Surrender. It just gives him the highest chance of uh, getting something, anything, to stick on the board in these first few turns, which it looks like it may not be that difficult to do versus Flurry, uh, given that his starting hand is not bad at all, but not quite as aggressive as I think you'd like, or at least, at least powerful at dominating the board. It's worth noting that pre-Ashes of Outland, most of the Dragon Hunter lists were not running Animal Companion. Mm. And because of the couple rotated, now there's room for other ones in the deck. And uh, Flurry's list is probably a little bit heavier than you might expect from before this expansion. So maybe a slow start is not necessarily the end of everything. Yeah, there were some lists... Uh, I feel like the real difference with Flurry's list is that he's not running the... Uh, toxic reinforcement side quest that Hunter has the ability to, whereby if you use your hero power three times, it summons three leper gnomes. It's a much more face version of the deck rather than a mid-range slash aggro version. Whereas, as we can clearly see, Flurry with the big old whelps and evasive worm in there has got a little bit more top end, which uh, may help him in some matchups that rely a little bit more on uh, sustainability going into the mid game. Sorry, I already had a decision point on turn two, whether he wanted to coin a three drop into three drop. I was actually looking at that, mm. uh, especially since sometimes the ooze gets the added small benefit of removing a dagger, but perhaps he's looking instead to coin the evasive fail failing, which is very difficult for Rogue to remove. Flurry having found Stormhammer is a very, very big deal indeed. Taking a look at the Rogue list from... Surrender. We can see there is no Cobalt Sticky Finger, which has been making its way into a few of the rogue lists, maybe mainly the Highlander versions, to be fair. But uh, with no weapon destruction whatsoever in the deck, if Flurry can stick this Stormhammer and just start swinging face with a Dragon Plate every turn, I think that's a recipe for a win just in that one card. I can definitely see that happening, but I'm inclined to think this is not the turn for it. He seems That's to fair. under yeah. hold back a little bit. Maybe this is the time to try and get the board instead, but Flurry disagrees. Uh, it was already a decision point there for Surrender, whether he wanted to actually trade into the Ooze or not, because of course he has Bamboozle developed, but sometimes Hunter can just ignore minions altogether, and the Rogue's health total is definitely a lot more precious to it than Hunter's. Yeah, I think the thinking is here from Flurry that, first of all, he doesn't really want to be trading at all, given that that's very possibly a bamboozle. Um, and second of all, if he does need to start trading, this still allows him to do that with the weapon. He can trade, he play a dragon and keep going with the infinite swings. Uh, but if there's nothing he wants to trade into, like here, he can just keep going face. But Surrender with a Bamboozle setup has minions protected mm -hmm. on board, and he can get a very strong Faceless Corruptor this turn. Yep. A Stranglehold on the board, and Flurry, as early as now, will probably be relegated to the all-face and race game plan. Which is not bad, to be fair. I think that's a very valid game plan. Rogue has lost two things that help a lot in that scenario. One is healing, of course, with Zilliax to try and heal back up out of the damage that Hunter's throwing through. And also Leroy, weirdly enough, because the rogue here wants to start counter-racing and getting lethal first, uh, of which Leroy would be a fantastic way to do so. It's very true. And key uh, to note here that Surrender did transform his Lackey, which of course makes sense, it's got a lower health total, but it kind of locks out Togwaggle on Curve for the upcoming turn. <laughs> Flurry and Deathwing, name a more iconic duo, <laughs> Gia. 
Oh, I'll wait. Man, I cannot. <laughs> there simply is no more iconic duo. <laughs> this is the third time he's picked Deathwing. I don't know in if he a, thinks it's two good days. or just cool, but I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I mean, you gotta respect a man that sticks to his. And now for Surrender, the second Faceless Corruptor was picked up. Um, unfortunately, because the Primordial is a poisonous minion, he can't quite value trade over it and then evolve one. But mm. I think it's fine to evolve the other one. So many options. Since Surrender knows he's ahead on board, I do think his greatest concern is just trying to race Flurry now. Make sure that Flurry is too pressured that he can't simply go face and not uh, deal with Surrender's board. I wonder. So he could go about it in this order as well, transform the uh, Miscreant. Oh! The Ahmed! Wow. And wow. then use the Faceless on the Lackey. Faceless Corruptor for two, five, two, four, sevens. Oh, one of them might die straight up to the Explorer or not. Surrender says, I well, want to, the to race. Well, yeah. pressure play it ends up dying too, but I think that's still just absolutely fine, really. Definitely. He's showing 10 on board with the dagger that is just a two-turn lethal setup, so lurie has got to find a way to race here, or he's got to start removing minions. Granted, Corrosive Breath gets sort of a job done, but he might have to commit the yeah. Scale Rider with it. You know what? So taking Flurry a look at the actual... No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The discrete numbers that Flurry has available. Like you said, he's dead in two turns as it currently stands. Uh, but maybe his thinking is Surrender will have to trade into this minion that can't be targeted by spells, uh, and therefore that will give him a three-turn clock. So I think I actually just like the all-face plan, because in a situation like this, if you start trading against a board with this much health as Dragon Hunter, I think it's just a recipe for disaster. Sure. Yeah. The most likely outcome is that Surrender does just take a value trade. Oh my gosh. So this does put the clock back on two turns, I believe, because he'll go down to 15 this turn. Oh, sorry, it's one short. Because Surrender is showing 13 on board and 14 with a dagger. Right. So instead, he's going to go for a tog, which more often than not still just gives it a two turn setup. Sorry, I, I don't see the outs. Even if he gets Huffer here, uh, that would give him 12 damage, including the hero power. Surrender is counting it up. Unleash the Hounds off of the top might have given him something, but even then I'm not really seeing it. Um... It's not in the list, is it? Oh, is it not? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So now, since Fl Flurry can't deal the lethal this turn. He's got to use Corrosive Breath and Scale Rider to remove something. 11, 12, 13, 14. No, but then it's still 15 with it's the just dagger. Yeah. yeah, no outs. Not the way we were expecting that to go, I think it's fair to say, with Flurry going incredibly aggressive right from the start of the game. But maybe you were right, Gia. His decision to go for the Stormhammer on three was clearly very, very aggressive in terms of uh, just racing, just going for damage to face. And my argument was he could still use it to trade if he wanted to, but maybe we should have just seen the Animal Companion to go for straight up board development. Yeah, Animal Companion, or I think Evasive Feywing was what I was looking at okay. for that turn. It did use the coin, but it just seemed quite difficult for Rogue to deal with on the spot. And um, it's hard actually for the Hunter to find the entire game plan they have to make that decision as early as turn three turn four whether they think they can still get any damage with minions right and if i recall it correctly i don't think flurry got any face damage in with minions all of that came from the storm hammer oh right yeah powers, i'm pretty sure well, and that, yeah that's 
yeah, the vast majority of it at least. But uh, I think that was a very well played game from Surrender overall. The biggest decision I think was just his mulligan, which maybe I'm overcomplicating how uh, easy of a decision it was. But I think just getting the very early curve of Pharaoh Cat into Bamboozle made it so Sur uh, Flurry just didn't want to trade for the entire game and means that now the Rogue is able to be queued yet again, given that we are in last year a standing week here so flurry after the break is going to have to find another deck to try and counteract the rogue maybe easier said than done but we'll find out after this Welcome back to Hearthstone Grandmasters. We are just starting our first match of the day with Surrender versus Flurry. Surrender took a very convincing win, it felt like, with the Rogue versus the Dragon Hunter. And now, Gia, Surrender, oh, sorry, Flurry is going to have to find a counter to that with either the Rogue, Mirror, or the Mage. What's your hypothesis as to which deck he will pick? I would hypothesize Mage, it seems like, according to stats. And I'm not sure if this is against the specific type of Highlander Rogue, which is with the stealth package, but it mm. seems like Mage generally is considered to have a decent matchup against Rogue. And it sounds like you are correct. We just got word that it is going to be the Mage that uh, Flurry is going for. And to be fair, we've seen pretty consistently that he's been doing very nicely against the Rogues with this list. He's able to get down some very big spells very early on in the game through the form it. of Dragoncaster. And if nothing else, he's just able to not die in the early game. It feels like a far cry from the Rogues of the past where Mage would just get smoked down before they could really get anything done. Now it's a much slower game. And when we do enter the late game, unless a huge Galakrond enters play, it feels like Mage is in the driving seat. 
I would definitely agree. And it really speaks to the evolution of Rogue as a class. After, I would say, the first large change to it was the nerf to Cold Blood, which made the card pretty much not see any more play after it went to two mana. And then the loss of Leroy. I think Rogue has definitely transitioned more to a late game sort of game plan where they actually just outvalue a lot of other classes these yep. days. It's going to be difficult to outvalue all of this, though. Flurry already has got... Wow. I mean, it looks like a massively top-heavy hand, which obviously it is. But I think this is actually just a pretty good mage hand for the matchup, to be honest. You've got the Doomsayer to fight back in the early game for any development. Reno on six should be a board clear the vast majority of the time. And then uh, the other blanks, you'll probably just fill in with the draws. I would agree with that in most situations, but Surrender's just drawn an Edwin off the top. Ah, oh, ignore um, everything I said then. <laughs> he doesn't quite have Shadow Step, but he could generate a Lackey this turn and then go for a Coin Lackey Edwin play on the following turn. It does float one mana, but I think I'm on board for that. Yeah, I mean, th the problem is that if you go Dagger this turn to go Praise Coin Edwin, then obviously the 1-1 one -one probably gets pinged away. So I think I agree, you probably want to go for Praise Galakrond here. Mm -hmm. Or the Edwin right away. Wow. Okay. So I guess the thinking here then... is that if you're waiting to make a 6-6 six -six Edwin, oh. yeah. one turn, potentially the 4-4 four -four could get in that eight damage over two turns this early. It depends though. I feel like there's certain mage hands that punish this, like for example, a frozen spell weaver or a saber confident orc. I guess that's not a huge punish because Surrender had the backstab for it. Yeah, I think this actually just works out really nicely for Surrender. The one thing I was going to say is that I didn't like the attack face because you want to leave open the option for seal fate to the face on turn three. Mm -hmm. But even having said that, I feel like the play of just going praise Galakron to hero power is better than that anyway. So I do like the hit face with the cat just for the one extra damage. Seal fate here as well, perfectly taken out the freeze. And it just leaves him in a really great spot. Also, Derek, we know that Flurry is in that group of people that does ping their own face to play around Seal Fate. True. Sometimes. Alright, so the Doomsayer Flurry is hoping will actually get to go off this turn as he doesn't have a turn 5 available, but Surrender. Mm. He's got Bab, he's got Praise Galakron. But I'm looking at going for Backstab Devoted Maniac. Just getting rid of that. Well, getting that better the than Invoke online. Is that better than Restless? I wonder if you can just go for Restless Mummy and sure. save uh, for, and yeah. then turn five, you can go Devoted and then Evolve it straight away. That's better, Seems yeah. Okay. It yeah. also just saves the backstab straight up. Yeah. No wasted damage. Yeah, I like that. The thinking, really... I suppose... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, tomb can hold no you do. Okay, I was going to say that what you could do as an alternate line of play is go backstab Praise Galakrond on your Edwin, which gives you 7 damage, and then you could go wide with Lackeys instead, which sets up a Faceless Corruptor on turn 5, which is definitely something to consider. Uh, but I feel like even then, I would rather just go with this play, get a decent body on board, and then, as I said, you can go for Devoted plus Witchy on turn 5. Right. And I think it's a very big deal that you guaranteed evolve the Devoted because this is going into the Reno turn. Surrender needs to find a way, from his yes. perspective, to set up a board with more than 10 health. I'm not sure how consistently that happens. He could, of course, just backstab the Ooze, go Devoted, evolve that. Or he could trade away the Mummy, evolve the Mummy, and play something else. Mm. Well, the and thing about just gonna start this. in saving the mummy, you obviously have a death rattle in play. So I guess mm -hmm. just see what happens with the witchy lucky first. Abomination oh, disaster is the disaster roll on five mana. And the I haven't seen that guy in so health. long. Um. You know how the order on this works? If Reno kills both oh, the mummy and the abomination... I did. I did know this at some point. Um, I couldn't tell you right here, but we're about to find out because as it stands, yeah. Flurry's got no other play. Because I know it's not play order. It's either always reborn first or always death rattle first. And I to be honest, the I death can't rattle goes before the reborn is my inclination. 
I think I learned this from Battlegrounds, actually. But nice. All right. So surrender as a consolation prize gets to keep his mummy, but that is his whole board gone. Poof. Indeed. So that was, I believe, uh, two out of four invokes. So going for the Praise Galakron this turn is not of the highest priority. Uh, I think, therefore, I like setting up what looks like a Faceless Corruptor play on this turn uh, to swing back the board in Flurry's, in Surrender's favor. Right. And he also takes a Shiv, which I think is a good call. Mm. He's just looking for a draw to get yet another invoke. Yeah. Having said that, though, the 3-1 the going into the... Reno is really nice with either Praise Galakrond or the Shiv. It's kind of close. Kind of close. Hmm. This gets damaged face though. The Whoa, escaped Mana Saber is a fantastic draw there for Flurry. Allows him to get Alex online as early as next turn if he needs to. Yep. Probably going to be a defensive one from the way the game has panned out. Mm. Surrender. Just gonna start with the cycle here. If he gets any invoke, this could be huge. Looking for ethereal, maybe. Yeah. Drawing into a secret is not terrible, though, as he's had this blackjack stunner ready. And yeah, it's a tough choice, though, right? Because ambush is very likely to be a very good secret to play on this turn. Because when you're entering turn eight and nine for the mage, they're likely to just play one really big thing, which you can then poison away. But that mm -hmm. activates the secret, which means your blackjack is no longer active. Yeah, as far as playing an actual minion, there's several threats, both of uh, the Alex Drazas, like you mentioned. But there's yeah. also a threat of something like power of creation, which doesn't interact with ambush. So. I don't mind playing it in advance. Yeah, especially as if Alex was to be played, it's not like the Mana Saber could trade into the 2-3 because it has to attack first yeah. to even get the Alex Traza down, weirdly enough. True enough. I think this turn might actually just be Frost Nova uh, and set up for attack into Reno, Reno on yeah. the following turn. Because I think if you just go attack face and Alex, you take another five damage immediately. It just doesn't mm -hmm. seem that good. And maybe yeah, it procs a, a two three. Yeah. Right into my trap. And Flurry agrees with you. Also chooses to play the Twilight Drake to prop a potential ambush, I suppose, or at least give him flexibility if he doesn't actually want to reno you know, on the next turn. And, wow, <laughs> another invoke for surrender. The dream, the absolute right. dream. <laughs> You could see how relieved he was. His entire game plan was revolving around finding either Togwaggle or another Invoke, and he is vindicated. Not that the Galakron 2 cards is too terrible, but seeing as Flurry will be turning the corner somewhat next turn, Surrender is looking for as much value and refill as possible right after the Reno turn. Well, that's if Flurry's a Reno gamer. He might be a box gamer as far as we know. He's a man who likes to live on the edge, if nothing else. He's a Deathwing gamer. That's <laughs> confirmed thrice over. Or at least the mouse controlling all his actions is a Deathwing gamer. <laughs> <laughs> so is Surrender maybe considering shadow stepping something here? Can't quite see it. But he, surely he's got to be expecting either Reno or Box. Oh, 100%. Hmm. Actually using the backstab. I couldn't tell you the reasoning for that. Nothing immediately comes to my mind. Maybe expecting a value trade with the Drake into Conjurer's Calling. This Conjurer's prevents calling. that. Yeah. Um, hand space? Although that doesn't really seem mm -hmm. like a good reason, to be honest. Interesting. Well, looks like Flurry was hovering over Box, but it will be Reno. <laughs> Alright, saving the Box for another day. Surely he's gonna rip it if Surrender gets a lot of development off of this Galifron. The last thing Flurry wanted to see, but to be honest, also the one thing he probably could have guessed was in Surrender's hand. <laughs> 
pretty lackluster selection, however, of the uh, zero mana reduced cards. For sure. Not much value at all. Shrender yep. probably going to end up stepping a miscreant this game. Don't know if it has to happen this turn, but uh, I could also see him stepping either the Draconic Lackey or the Blackjack Center yeah. catching the secret immediately. Given that it's Dirty Tricks, wants to get different cards to draw. He's still got the bamboozle that he can go for, of course. I, I think the thing I'm looking at is uh, Blackjack Stunner as well. That's something that I've been so consistently impressed by in this tournament, Ooh. is just how insanely powerful stepping Blackjack Stunner is. Surrender, taking a quick glance right at what I believe is his deck tracker, which the players are allowed <laughs> to use. Because he's only got 12 cards left in the deck. He's not originally a Highlander deck, but mm -hmm. Alexstrasza could still be active if he's drawn all of the second copies. And just look at this situation for Flurry. He draws what is, in a sense, the perfect card here in Carter Defender to protect his life total, get the taunt in play, heal him up. But the Blackjack is just means he he can't play it right. It just can't be the yeah. play. I, I bring light. No, I rip the box here every time. <laughs> I guess C2 hold off a little bit. Does this now give Surrender any lethal options? There's mm. eight in play. You can get to nine, ten, eleven with double stepping the goblin, uh, which obviously doesn't look worth it. I guess you could start with the hero power to see if you hit Kobold, which I think would be lethal. I'm looking at this. Yes, the Alexstrasza and all that blackjacking Flurry's <laughs> Alexstrasza, which of course yep. will be unplayable then. And if Surrender's worried about some type of Wow, Surrender's Ooh. also a Deathwing gamer! Both oh! of them! What? <laughs> Both Deathwings! <laughs> okay. The boys are back in town. <laughs> they certainly are. Surrender could still use the Blackjack, and if he don't, wants don't to be very you. safe against a possible box yep. step, maybe the Alexstrasza since it's active, but... It, all, of course, just makes his board very low pressure. I guess yeah. the refill is already in hand. If a box does any shenanigans, Surrender can just play the Deathwing on the left. The two Deathwings with one facing forward and one to the side look like the pictures the police take when they arrest someone. <laughs> Mug shots, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's time! Shrub it to the rescue! Oh, maybe. with the Caligos a little longer sure. Game Strike is not enough. Neither mm. is the Ice Barrier. So, Probably let's see what's in the box the barrier. here. Yeah, I like the barrier. Nice and cheap. Lots of health. But now, it is time for the box. Another Crystal Salt? Okay. Yeah. Whoa! There we go. Oh! Got a defender! Dark. Hello? Dark! Illegal! 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 <laughs> um... Oh um, my god. Yes, I agree. That was completely <laughs> not allowed. Uh, and Surrender's used the Blackjack. I think he's still got one in the deck, so... Uh, is that the out now? Is he just... Because obviously he could flick these and then try and right. go to the second half using maybe the Rush Lackey or some combination of Lackeys from the Mystery. But just gives so can, much health. Yeah, I can also see a world where he just tries to develop something this turn and then try and draw the other Blackjack because he's obviously got the step and another secret for it. Uh, but then, if he develops pretty much anything, Flurry can trade them and get the healing anyway. Yeah. So, looks like he's gonna go for Deathwing into Flick, which is, of course, a board clear. Flurry's healing for 12 in the meantime. Okay, starting with the upgrade. Yep. Mm, debatable upgrade, but sure. The flick, of course, also removes the natural copy of Cartoot in Flurry's hand. Oh yeah, true. So, I'm not hating it. 
I mean, it also gets uh, but also surrenders, surrenders like, one. Yeah. But I feel like he's far less inclined to play that trick. I agree. Think. Psyche's instead going for the Hanar cycle turn. Never against that. Turn. Yeah, counter spell is not bad one at all. It's quite expensive though. The freezing trap. Ambush feels pretty good here, right? Mm, the double cartoons with freezing seems good to me. I don't know. It does prevent one proc, I, I guess, one more proc I guess. of healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> probably not okay. that impactful. What can he do here? Turn probably starts with testing for counter spell, and mm -hmm. then arcane breath. Look for a freeze or a way to deal with Anixia. Yeah, exactly. Poly, flame strike, blizzard. It's been a while Ooh. since I've seen Mr. Venture Cole. That's pretty bad for Surrender, right? He can't play a lot of his stuff, especially if he can get frozen. Yes, yeah. He could Shadow He's Step worried it? about Blizzard. I guess. But that's <laughs> basically eating a Shadow Step. For sure. Hmm. So, what's the Dream Arcane Breath uh, discover for Flurry here? Something like Ray of Frost? What? So that he could also oh, develop sorry. Wing Guardian. Hmm. Another box! Why don't ya? Oh, gosh. It worked so well the last time, let's just try it again, why don't we? <laughs> this, of course, can be... Well, he can trade the Venture Co. into this. It's exactly enough attack. So, Surrender can free up the mana a little bit. But that's still not the Blackjack Stunner, so... A whole wall of taunts to deal with. He could seal fate his own venture co, trade it into the cartoot, and then flick the wing. <laughs> that seems bad. There's of course still a 6 1 left, and he can't tell what lackey he'll be getting. It's so awkward because he wants to give the plus one attack to the venture code, but then that yeah. costs four mana. It doesn't yeah, yeah, die yeah. immediately. So I think maybe you just trade in anyway and then hope to get a better lackey. At worst, he can just rush lackey and step the rush lackey. Yeah, I mean, he, okay. He's going for okay. a seal plate on his own minion here. Yeah. Okay, oh, sure. <laughs> Play I thought was bad is actually a good question mark. It allows him to push eight at the very least. So yeah, that's the big that's upside. Enough. I was definitely looking at getting the miscreant down instead of trying to rush that and generate more value. Sure. Well, Derek, I don't wow. see an answer for the Anixia unless it's in the box. Really? Really? Okay, he, could, he could just play two more taunts. Yeah, I think I mean, Surrender has shown he doesn't have the other Blackjack. That's right, that's what, what I was going to say. Make us rich? But do the two taunts win? The four taunts, Gia, with the two uh, mirror images as well. Sure. <laughs> and I guess he's got this Druid side quest, which I didn't notice. Oh yeah, true. Will that, that activate on this turn? I'm not sure which side quest it is. Okay, it's that one. So it does activate. Oh, is that good or bad? Because it gives Slurry development on the board, which he sorely needed. Yes. Maybe he's not. But it not also opens for... up Deathwing. True. <laughs> Ooh, or oh, Kronks. That is lethal. Unless it's uh, he counter it. spell. Well, no, he goes for five damage to the face. Step it, five damage to the face. Oh yeah. Unless Obviously, from Surrender's maybe. perspective. Yeah. It's counter spell, right? Or spell bender? Or spell bender. Right. Oh, I was looking at the AOE. Forget anything. He surely just goes for it, right? Because even if it's one of those, he's still in a good spot. So there you go. <laughs> it was a risky play there from Surrender, but in the end, it works out, and he goes up two. 
games to zero. To be perfectly honest, when that puzzle box had resolved, I thought that he was just out of it. Clearing the board, twisting Nether into power of creation for Kartots is <laughs> an illegal play, as we commented on at the time. But even illegality cannot stop surrender. Not at all. He at least. <laughs> <laughs> because he's got the two death rings with the mug shots. Clearly, surrender is ah, all It's all under coming control. together. Yeah. It all is, but it's not coming together for Flurry on the other side. He is left with only one deck remaining in this last hero format, last hero standing, sorry, format, I should say, which is the Rogue. So at the very least, he's left now with kind of a mirror for the most part. It's two Rogues, neither of which are Highlander, both of which are Galakrond. The difference, of course, comes in the stealth for Flurry and the secret package for Surrender. Do you have any inclination as to who that favors overall? Um, it's tough to say. Yeah. I feel like if Hanar comes down early, of course it favors the secret package. But, but actually a strong mechanic in a deck where you're running cards like Faceless Corruptor or just even uh, Praise Galakron, cards that rely on a minion sticking on onto the board so you can actually yeah. get the payoff. So stealth allows you to dictate the trades and so on. So without any, barring any early Hanar shenanigans, I feel like Stealth Rogue might have a leg up on this. And I think another thing that could also help Stealth Rogue is uh, included in this list, actually, I believe, is Akama, which we've seen cut from the majority of the rogues that even run the stealth package. But uh, I think this is one matchup that as long as it doesn't go too crazy at the start, Akama Prime as a 6-5 with perma stealth later on in the game, no matter how many times you attack with it, could be pretty good, as the only real way to deal with that is, uh, what, Kronk's AoE as the best option you have. Sure. Uh, so, I'd, at the very least, I hope we get to see that, because uh, the Primes haven't been getting their due diligence, I feel like. Fair enough, and I understand the reasoning why Akama's been cut a lot, because the for Rogue in particular, comes at a mana slot, where they're already kind of saturated. They're yeah. playing Flick, Heist Baron, Togwaggle, and Kronk's, which are all just kind of understated cards for the cost that they're at. So it's kind of already a slow turn for Rogue, and yeah. you don't necessarily want to be playing another quote-unquote understated card on turn six. But maybe in particularly the mirror, when your opponent is going to be playing those slow cards on turn six, if you just play a six mana six five that's going to pressure them every turn, maybe that's mm -hmm. actually what gives Lurry an advantage here. Maybe, maybe. I still feel like outside all of that, the main things you're looking for, outside of an explosive early Edwin, if that's possible, uh, are the usual good things. Galakrond, High Sparrow, Togwaggle, making sure you don't run out of value as the late game develops. And in the early game, maybe getting down a Hanar, as you said, for Surrender and for Flurry, trying to activate his Greyheart Sage and also getting the evil Miscreants down, just fighting for board back and forth as these Rogue Mirrors do. Because that's one of the things you like most about Rogue Mirrors, I think, isn't it? That how swingy they are. It rarely feels like they're over right at the start of the game. It's true. I mean, even though one player can get a huge Edwin, the other player could have a Sap, and, and then one player gets Galakron, the other player could still get a Galakron, and it's yep. both sides doing the most illegal things, the way Hearthstone <laughs> is meant to be played. Oh, I could not agree more. Uh, I think that, I mean, like you said as well, the most illegal things do come in the form of the things both the decks share with Akama and Heist Bar Baron, so at the very least, we'll be in for a good match, as I believe we are ready to jump in now, right off the start for Surrender, he's got a Shadow Jeweler Hanar. Is that a card you're keeping without any secrets? I kind of like it. At least on turn two, what are they going to do to answer that? But for Flurry's hand, that is premium. Every mm. single card here looks great to keep. Uh, yeah, the one thing for Surrender oh, is whether he wants to keep Raze with the Hanar, I think. Yeah, he does. Mm. Finding Galakron as well is not bad at all. It does look at the moment like Flurry might have a slight advantage Ooh. in the early game. Barricat off the top is huge for Surrender. Yeah, I was maybe not say, so much. <laughs> I was a bit curious about whether he wants to keep Raze because it's probably getting played turn three if he wants to go right. Hanar on two, but with the draw of the Barricat. Granted, Flurry did have the answer. Yeah, saves himself from a pretty dicey situation, actually, with Praise Galakrond. He can now just, I would imagine, curve into either a Karma Greyheart, or maybe Micro Mummy a Karma and then Greyheart on four. 
Hide is very strong. Yeah. I'm liking away. the sound of quite a comma into Greyheart. And Surrender here knows that the five health actually survives a coin seal fate and the Pharaoh Cat trade. Mm. Just plays it down. Where he is threatened enough by the Hanar that he's trying to look for an option to deal with it immediately rather than go for probably the strongest coin three into three play he could make. Shadows. Hmm. Yeah. I like it from Flurry. He develops a board that challenges Hanar and also still has a stealth minion so he can play Greyheart next turn. Yeah, it's 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 a little bit awkward because if he goes if the Hanar trades back into the two one, then Spy Mistress obviously does not trade very well into a one one Hanar. But he also really wants to make sure the Hanar is dead as quick as possible. Um, and that, but I, I feel like this is fine. Reasoning. He can still, yeah. oh sorry, can still curve into Greyheart very nicely this way. And I think what you mentioned about the value trade is his reasoning for also coining out the faceless lackey, so that it mm. probably gives him enough different in attack breakpoints that he can take not too awkward of a trade. Surrender can rush out the Sparrow Cat if he wants to. Doesn't get the secrets payoff, but I think the Hanard did stave off at least a bit of early pressure. The problem is he probably wants to save something cheap to use with Faceless Corruptor, so he's actually going to hold back for a while. Rushing yeah. Candle Taker also seems pretty good. He can still take a, a very nice trade with the Dagger there instead. Mm -hmm. so the Greyheart, I think this is the first time I've seen it active all weekend, including other regions. Wasn't awake for every region, but... It's been played as a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three a lot. This is an interesting play now from Flurry. It, because it obviously is a stronger play on this turn. He'd rather play a 3-4 with stealth than just a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, but it does mean that he's kind of locked in on the following turn into going for Greyheart. Uh, which yeah. I guess you would probably rather do anyway. Uh, there's few draws that would divert you from that, but it's, uh, I guess, uh, exchanging a little bit of uh, flexibility for a bit more power immediately. I'm not 100% sold on it, but I think the difference is very, very discreet. Yeah. So, just another stealth minion for Flurry here. He's got a strong grip on the board, but Surrender, he can go for a trade, and then Faceless the Reborn. Very strong. Yeah, when, are we gonna talk shield. when are we going to talk about how small Surrender's sips of tea are? It, I can't <laughs> get over it. He, he takes the smallest sips I've ever seen in my life. So just options. wait. Eventually he'll take another sip, but I, I swear he's just like touching it with his lips. How can you tell how much of the liquid actually enters his mouth? I, it's I mean, the same amount every so time. Much. <laughs> I don't know. Look at that! You barely touched it! <laughs> Take a gulp! No, I can't look away! Era. That's what I'm here for, Gia, to distract okay. you from saying anything insightful. Great. So much synergy in this cast. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't fault Surrender for taking tiny sips if his brain is large. As has been demonstrated by his play so far. Um, <laughs> rushing the bone ring. <laughs> ah, yes. Small so sips, bad. big brain. The surrender chant. <laughs> oh, no. It's happening. Um, yeah, okay. Flurry can trade, dagger down, play either the micro mummy or the shot bot. Hmm. Both of them are a bit awkwardly statted because, I mean, the candle taker can take down uh, the first half, the yeah. dagger can take down the second. I'm quite surprised by. Oh, okay. I thought he played the mummy there. I was like, this yes. has to be a dagger, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? The one thing I really did want to see was a dagger on this turn. Also, killing off the lackey there to play around Togwaggle. Wow. Which he is instantly vindicated for. Wow. Amazing. There. I mean, whether or not the Togwaggle was drawn off the top, we should give it the same reaction, which is to say it right. was a good play to kill off the Lackey there in exchange for a bit of damage. 
And I think it really was because yep. the three one lines up poorly against uh, one the one two yes. from Surrender's perspective. And even if Surrender removes it with another spell or something, mm-hmm. Flurry's got the dagger to deal with it. And at twenty nine, I think the health doesn't matter so much. Mm. Surrender. Now he's thinking about whether he wants to kill this to play around Faceless Corruptor, maybe. True. Definitely it does make it a, a tad awkward, because uh, Seal Fate definitely wants to... Okay, I was going to say, before the Devoted Maniac came down, Seal Fate definitely wanted to be played to get a lackey for Togwaggle on the following turn. Uh, but this is just kind of easier mana expenditure on this turn. I'm very happy with this. Oh. It's tempting to take the evolve, but I, I think, think you just shot bot. Yeah. Or micro mummy. Either give one. Three two. Yeah. Either one. Yeah, and I think this is good recognition from rogue players that you have a very tempting combo, but sometimes you have to hold it back for the even more powerful thing. Which is the wondrous one. That's exactly right. It's what Flurry has consistently demonstrated, which is knowing what you're always moving towards, playing with purpose in his game plan, which uh, I think some players uh, can fall short of, like you said, because of the uh, immediate allure of powerful plays. But he knows cheating out zero mana cards, that is the powerful thing that Rogue can do right so now. Many options. Speaking of powerful things, Surrender is, of course, the first to get the wand down, and he already has Kronks and Galakrond in hand. Yeah, so nuts. Flurry's got to get probably better cards off of the wand if he wants to even have a shot at the game. I suppose it, to an extent, uh, to a minor degree, works in Flurry's favor because he's more likely to hit Kronks and Galakrond off of the wand if he picks that. Um, it, it's a very glass-half-full approach, even though... The glass is uh, more empty than Surrender's cup of tea will be in 5,000 years. <laughs> now Flurry, this is actually a very smart face attack from Surrender. There, really because smart, Because yeah. if Surrender, uh, if Flurry wanted to evolve the Devoted Lackey, he couldn't kill off the Shield of Galakrond. Yeah, I think mean, that was very, very smart. It means the Flurry does not get the 5 drop, and he still has to tank the extra damage to kill off the shield of Galakrond. And away we go with the Wand. Even if it doesn't get anything particularly strong, just the Faceless Corruptor this turn is huge, and that's an Edwin! That is an Edwin. I think that's now a fully invoked Galakrond. Uh, oh no, my apologies, one-off. Still though, this turn is nuts! He just goes face with the Lackey, transforms it, Plays, you know, I don't even hate playing the blackjack for tempo here. Whoa. Oh, that works too. Blackjack on Togwaggle. I think this is smart. If your opponent is ever playing an eight mana Togwaggle mm -hmm. in this situation, they're just going to die because they yeah. can't play the wand on the same turn, no matter what then. He's just uh, fine. It's just he better, just yep. Rushes the Rush Lackey, uses the dagger to kill off 3 3, plays Edwin, or saves the Lackey altogether. Oh, okay. So this way he gets to clear off every single minion on board while still the max damage face. Yeah, and it's something that survives Kronk still, even in the worst case scenario. So right. I'm fine with it. Oh, a Karma Prime, not what Flurry needed there. And despite getting a, a roughly equivalent wand there in terms of how powerful things it can do, I'm not certain that it's going to be enough. He's got the sap though, so if he finds a way mm -hmm. to remove this Togwaggle, he okay. might be able to come back. Uh, not against Galakrond, sure. but from Flurry's perspective, he's just got to hope that the rest of the hand from Surrender is air. <sighs> For Flurry here, he's probably, if he ever plays a Karma Prime, he's going to be wishing, no, stop being stealth. I want my opponent to trade into it so I don't die. <laughs> Good point. Uh, he can't seal fate the damaged Tog. And he can't both sap. And he can't do everything he wants to do, right? He wants to play the other seal fate, look for a lackey. But he also wants to sap 
So, a little yeah. bit short. Instead, he's gonna evolve Shotbot. He's <laughs> <laughs> got another shot. This could be Corcron Elite. This okay, could okay. Be, um, the thing that someone's in <laughs> The meme of the set, of course. Go on, Surrender. Let us see the 9 1 in a GM match. Just kill it off. Just for the sake of it. <laughs> Um, On board, he's too off, but I think should be able to find something with Galapron. Stepping a lackey puts him one off. Yeah, yeah, he's one damage off lethal. Yeah. Um, Surely no Galapron generate can do this, right? And even if he doesn't get anything good off Galapron, he could still use Dirty Trick, step the Blackjack, and play it to sap flurries, Edwin. Yeah, I think that's the one thing he needs to make sure is that he has the ability to kill off or deal with the other customer, which this allows. I just got a zero mana one anyway. Searching for another goblin or kobold. Still a little bit short, but not a problem for surrender here, I think. For flurry, is it just Galakron or bust? Galakron into Kronks, which we've already seen today or that was from a wand but still yeah i think so uh if he could get a taunt lackey and generate a really expensive red win but i think at five mana he doesn't even have the time for that I give up. oh yeah. i um okay from flirty there obviously it was a terrible spot but he wasn't dead, and if there's anything I know from Rogue, yeah. you never concede until you've seen your very last draw. Maybe he had already seen it off the top and the spectator Maybe. client took a, uh, a second to catch up sure. with him. We'll probably have to go with that, because I agree, there was a slim chance for him to be able to take the win. But, aside from that slightly strange ending, that does mean that now, for two weeks in a row, we have Surrender in our finals he is already at the start of the day he was guaranteed to be in division a but if he can get a second place into a first place in addition to qualifying to the global finals off of last year's grandmasters in addition to already having gone to the world championship finals in previous hearthstone championship tour years in addition it, to taking the smallest sips in the history of hearthstone is there nothing this man cannot do uh, maybe take big sips of tea is the the one thing he's incapable of doing but either way Jumping into the bracket now, we can see how things are shaking out for today. Surrender does end up being our first finalist. Huge congratulations to him. And Flurry, I think that, again, it was one of those situations there where after losing the first game of the series, things really just started slipping away very, very quickly. Uh, again, I think you can make arguments about the way he plays it. At the very least, I don't think there were any obvious huge misplays from him. It was just deviations in or differences in uh, strategy that you could argue about what you're going for in the matchup. But I think overall he played a very strong series of Hearthstone. True enough. Commiserations to Flurry and I guess also to the viewers if they wanted to see a lot of Hearthstone today because on Sundays <laughs> for at least the Swiss portion we only have three matches for each region because it is just single elimination in the top four and LHS does lend itself to sweeps more often than other formats. So now it's just going to be the other semifinal and then surrender versus either Kin or Glory. And speaking of Kin or Glory, you already have your prediction in surrender at the start of the day through to the finals. Now it's my pride on the line, Gia. The far more significant uh, piece of uh, pride. pride on the line here. Yep, my portion is much larger. 